This is the black potter. Yeah, AKA yeah, Kuku Shu, no where we speak truth to power. Now, here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only do it on one condition to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the black potter. And from the loose reel, we endeavor to always keep it real. Remember, this is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. My brother, my sister, today we have a number of issues we want to look at. And I will need you to come along, my brother, my sister. Hey, a number of issues are coming out of the news reel where we endeavor to always keep real. My brother, my sister, the content. My brother, my sister, the very first story I want to look at today, and it is a story that I am taking from graphic online. It says, and I read, God will prosper Ghana under Baumia. And this is from Reverend Intim Fojo. Who is Reverend Intim Fojo? And this is from graphic online. God will prosper Ghana under Baumia. I read, a deputy minister of education, Reverend John Intim Fojo has urged the Ghanaians to eschew religious stereotypes from the nation's political discourse. In a social media post, he intimated that God welcomes all, all, regardless of race or social distinction, and that he chooses whomever he wants to fulfill specific goals at any given time, irrespective of their religious affiliations. Therefore, he believed that Ghana will be highly blessed under the presidency of Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bahomia, who would lead the country into socio-economic prosperity. Yes. So this man here is called Reverend Ntim Fojo. And he is a deputy minister of education my brother my sister by his title it means that he's a christian missionary what some people would call man of god he says god will prosper ghana in the tenure of office of bahomia now this man is in the government of nana akufuwado can we find out from him if God has truly prospered Ghana in the tenure of office of his boss, Nana Akufuado? Why is it that God has not prospered Ghana in this present regime, but will rather prosper Ghana in the next regime? Once he has the answers to the fact that God is going to prosper Ghana in uh, Baumia's regime, can we find out why he a holy man of God has been with this government and yet we don't seem to see the prosperity of God in this regime. We see wanton corruption. We see stealing. My brother, my sister, armed robbery is on the increase. And when you look around the so-called free SHS where this man serves as a deputy education minister, under that up auspices, my brother, my sister. It is a shambolic thing. My brother, my sister. Reverend in Tim Fogio is doing politics with Jesus Christ. And it's so shameful. Yes, it is true that God accepts everybody. Not looking at the race and not looking at some other things that human beings look at. But if you can boldly come out and say 
that God would prosper Ghana in the regime of Baumia, you have taken sides first and foremost. Number two, can you explain to us why God has not prospered Ghana in the regime of the man you are serving, even though you are so much of a holy man of God? These are the charlatans who use the Bible to hoodwink people into oblivion. I have stopped listening to people like this. These were the same people who pushed for a cathedral. At the time, people were dying left, right, and center in hospitals that were ill-equipped. At the time, my brother, my sister, Ghana was going through nothing but hell. And their excuse was that you can't wait to have everything before you build a house for God. Today, Nana Akufuado says, oh, you know, the next person who will come after me will take Ghana to the promised land. I couldn't do it. He promised to take us to the promised land. What happened to that? Can you tell us? It is sad, my brother, my sister, when you look at some of these so-called men of God. Play politics with the Bible. It is so sad that some of these men of God will sit down and watch the nation go down the drain. They will never talk. The only time they talk is when elections are coming. Can you call these people men of God? I am so ashamed of them. I have no respect absolutely for these so-called men of God. Schools under trees. How many of them went around the churches to talk to the churches in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? To beg the churches to at least help out with building some furniture and some schools around Ghana. How many of them did that? They sat in the comfort of their offices, took hefty monthly salaries, and kept quiet as if nothing was happening. Now elections are coming. All of a sudden, they have found their lost voices and they are campaigning using the Bible. Nothing can save Baumea from going into opposition. Not a reverend minister, not a prophet, not even the angels. Ghanaians have suffered enough. Ghanaians have gone through hell. The lies are too much. The tomfoolery is too much. My brother, my sister, look at your pocket. And when you are voting, you vote properly. I don't care who you vote for, but certainly not the Akufu Ado, Baumia government extended. I leave it here. Now, the next thing I want to look at is taken from treenews.com, and it says the best way to measure government's performance is in our pockets, not the tracker. And this is Kofi Adams speaking. Bo, I'm a member of parliament, Kofi Adams. Whether or not the government is performing will be decided by Ghanaians on how they feel in their pockets. He said this will not be based on a performance tracker that has been launched by the government. Kofi Adams indicated that the tracker contains inadequate and accurate information. For instance, he knows that on the tracker, it is stated that work at the St. Augustine's house, house one at the Bishop Herman College in Pando, Volta region, is 100% complete. However, he said a visit to the school recently showed that the information is false. I leave it here. My brother, it is interesting what Kofi Adams is saying. In fact, at a time when he was a personal assistant to Jerry John Rollins, Kofi came out and made it clear that the upcoming elections only one thing will decide it the pockets of the people and that was when kufua came out with the slogan she was sitting how many of us remember that rollis was not happy with this he said no don't look at your pockets and vote we are working so hard it's not started reflecting in your pockets yet so if you want to look absolutely into your pockets to vote, you might vote wrongly. Well, in that election, Rollins still went ahead to win. 
by hook or crook. My brother, my sister, Kofi Adams and the rest were still part of Rawlings. But they never came out to say that, hey, you know what? What Kufu said is the best. And is the truth. She was sitting in Papa. Look at your pocket. Look at your condition of life and vote. Today, what Kufu said, that was so much fought by the Rawlings regime at the time, of which Kofi Adams was part, is coming back. Politicians only quote parts of the Bible that support them. Those that do not support them, they will never go there. What Kufu said at the time was so relevant and still more than just relevant. She was sitting in the Abapa. Rawlings didn't want to hear that at all because he knew how much suffering was meted out on the Ghanaian people. He knew if that slogan was allowed to take center stage, he would lose the elections. So he fought. She was sitting in the Abapa. There was even a song about it. She was sitting in the Abapa. She was sitting emu, she was sitting emu, she was sitting emu na tu abapa. How many of us remember this song? My brother, my sister, Rawlings didn't like it. The Rawlings people did not like it. All of a sudden, the Rawlings people are clinging to this. Since when did they change? That is the problem I have with politicians. They could see it to be very white. Yet they will all say it's black because it doesn't favor them at the time. And when we behave like this, nobody will give us an iota of credibility. Kofi Adams, even though what you are saying right now is nothing but the truth, but the fact that you and your boss, Rawlings at the time, fought against Shewasitnam Natu Abapa, is making it difficult for people to come out and support what you kicked against years back. It's the same message I sent to Ablakwa and the rest of them. Ablakwa is busily exposing this government in power. I believe and I pray Ablakwa will do the same thing when his government comes into power. A lot of them see these positions as employment. Therefore, if they fight against the government, they see themselves to be fighting against their employment. They are fighting against their food. It's not about Ghana anymore. It's about their food. How many politicians think about Ghana? How many politicians will stand in front of Nana Kufuado and tell them, hey, this decision you are taking is not going to help Ghana grow? For that matter, we will not support you. The vindictive president will make sure that you are kicked out and a family member is brought in to replace you. Osafu Mafu's son on my mind. I leave it here. Turn and send me a letter, Matam Sanga. Yabo! Now, the next thing I would like to look at, and I needed to come around so that we'll deal with this very, very, very carefully. And this one is taken from uh, Ghana Web. It says NPP constituency chairman fumes over imposition of running mates on Dr. Baumia. And I read, the new patriotic party NPP chairman for the Jabin constituency, Alex Safo, has alleged that Ashanti regional constituency chairman uh, has been pressured to sign a petition endorsing Matthew Opoku Prempe, particularly known as Napo, as the running mate for vice president Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. He said that the current happening in the party regarding the selection of a running mate it's needless and strange in the history of the NPP. Matthew Opoku Prempe, a.k.a. Napo, is so desperate to be the running mate. And I don't know why. And he's doing everything propagandously possible. To become one. I'm so ashamed of this guy. My brother, my sister. I, st I stopped supporting Napo from when he said Nana Akufuado had done far better than Kwame Nkrumah when it comes to education in Ghana. 
from that day, I said, this guy is a hopeless boot licker. Useless boot licker. Kwame Nkrumah took money from out of his personal pocket and built a whole school to accommodate students who had been rusticated by the colonial government. And you can still see that school. The very first school named after Ghana. My brother, my sister. Today, when I sit back and I look at Napo, kneeling down before Baumia with all those antics, so desperate to be running mate, I look at this guy and I say, this guy is a hopeless boot licker. It was the same Napo who told us that when students were asked to gather at the Independence Square to get placed in schools at a time when the whole world was going digital, they invited students to come personally, bones, blood, and flesh, to the Independence Square to be placed into schools. They didn't provide any first aid. Neither did they provide water for the students. They didn't provide toilet facilities for the students, my brother. Common sense will tell you that if you are gathering people in public, these things must be made available. He didn't do it. Students went to the Independence Square. In the heat of the tropical sun, some of them collapsed. This is not the first time we are seeing students collapse like that. At our independence ceremony, every six months, we see students collapse. This year, a soldier man collapsed and even died later at the hospital. Napo came out with the alibi. Oh, you know what? Eh, the, the students, those who collapsed, were actually bust in. In other words, they used a bus to carry them to the place and they were asked to act. What is the acting? To fall and pretend they had collapsed just to smear some bad cream on the party in power. Can you imagine this childish talk? This was what Napo said. I looked at this guy and I said, ah, yeah, this guy is a medical doctor, right? A dentist. Why is he speaking so unmedical? You do not know. Common sense, my brother, my sister, in medicine will tell you that when people are dehydrated, they can easily collapse. He blamed that on Mahama. He said Mahama was responsible for bringing the people to the Independence Square and asking them to collapse, to give Nana Akufuado a bad name. Napo said this childish thing. He never apologized for it. Today, we see Napo in photographs, kneeling before Paomia, as if to say, my whole life depends on this running me. You are not getting it, my brother. Go and fix your own doomso doomso timetable. We don't have any to show you such arrogance. Even the MPP is distancing itself from Napo. Hey, you can force people to sign. You can bribe people to sign. You can do anything you want. You will never be running mate. But who even cares? Do I care? After all, whoever the devil chooses will flock with him. For me, Bawamia is not even the right guy. Ah, what are we talking about? You want to be a running mate to a losing candidate. A candidate who has lost already in heaven. He's only one in hell. Where Satan is his master. A hopeless candidate who said he was only a mate. The driver took control and did everything in his power. Painted Nana Akufuado as the arrogant, nonchalant man with a pension. To disregard any opinion is this one to a running a, a, a presidential candidate hey, you can spend all the stolen money you want in the next campaign you can spend all the stolen money all you politicians the hand of god will talk in a rare situation where baumia steals the election i will steal myself out of this country and I'll leave you to deal with this guy who is a Muslim in the daytime and a Christian at night. In fact, at midnight, he's a Hare Krishna. 
And before early morning, he's already a Buddhist. What a confused politician. Now, there is something I want to look at, and I don't know what to think about it, but we'll still look at it very, very carefully. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah, the most corrupt government in Ghana is the Nana Akufuado government. And we have people like Reverend Ntim Fodjo sitting in there. They can't even come out and preach the Bible against corruption. They are sitting in there. When you look at his chicks, they are so fat, you can tell that he's eating bamo. My God. They don't care what happens to the poor people in the ghetto. All they care about is that their party is in power and they don't care what happens. Now there is this thing here that I want to look at. And uh, this is the last thing I will look at before I leave. I'm reading this from 3news.com and it says, Baumia is in pole position by the grace of Allah to take over from me on 7th January 2025. And this is Akufu speaking. I read, President Anando Danko Akufu has said that he has no doubt that the flag bearer of the new patriotic party, the NPP Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, will continue to work and enhance the development of Zongo communities if he wins this year's election to be president. Mr. Akufu said he has no doubts that Dr. Baumia will be an inclusive president. I think right now, Nana Akufuado and his people are making a mockery of Allah. Even at the Zongo, they don't see Baumia as part of them. These people only come there when it's time for election. You don't see Baumia in any mosque. It's only when elections are coming that he forces himself to be seen in some mocks and he's in fact betrayed by his own carelessness and my brother my sister dishonesty he can't even sit like a normal muslim does he will fall because he's not used to that when you say ruku baumia cannot do it properly let alone sujud let Baumia recite Al Fatiha and any surah from the Quran of his choice. My brother, you will see that some people are nothing but liars. What is Nana Kufuado saying? That Baumia will be an inclusive president and that he will help develop the Zongos? Okay, so tell us right now what has Baumia done for the Zongos? The Zongos are still very dirty. The most relegated places in Ghana. The Zongo has the highest level of illiteracy. The Zongo has the highest level of crime. Is that the badge of honor of Baumia? High levels of crime, high levels of illiteracy, high levels of poverty. The Zongo is the most impoverished place in the whole Ghana. Is that the badge of honor for Baumia? Ampa, she was sitting in the Baba. My brother, until Ghanaians get to realize that these leaders cannot do anything for us except that we do for ourselves. We need to stand up and force them to work after all we employ them. It's time to run away from all dishonesty, corruption, and hold on to patriotism. I leave it here. <laughs>